This is a world-class story about a relationship I thought was going nowhere and turned out to be one of the most fulfilling experiences of my life. I met Nisi in the project. She was walking home from the store and I offered to carry her grocery bags. I was thinking maybe this should account towards my community service. Some of the bags was torn up, her knees were bloody, and one of her shoes was missing. But I ain't one to ask questions. Like my mama used to say, don't buy a shovel if you ain't willing to dig. Turns out the groceries were stolen. And when the market security guard gave chase, Nisi fell down but still managed to get away with the meat and canned goods. She ain't let me walk her to her apartment though. She ain't want me to know where she lived at. My ego was more bruised than Tina Turner. So I later did some research and discovered that she was living with her ex-girlfriend. Actually, I mean her ex-boyfriend, but he spent all his money on sex change medication. So he couldn't afford to move out. Only thing was missing was Jerry Springer. So me and Nisi would meet at the playground and take long walks talking for hours. Sharing our pain wasn't the only thing that was getting our heart rate up. She would always tell me she wasn't looking for nothing serious. But her and her kids eventually moved in with me. Probably should have bought her a dictionary so she knew what the word serious meant. Let me tell y'all something. You don't really know a motherfucker until you live with him. Cause in some cases I'd rather know your dark secrets than wash your dark underwear. Almost immediately things changed. I felt like I'd adopted four kids and Nisi was one of them and let me tell y'all something, you don't need bars to be in prison. I come home from work, she'd be scrolling on her phone and the baby be missing. And that was normal, that's why we used to call her Amber. I'd be like, yo, where's your child? You about to be in a commercial for CPS. She'd be like, oh shit, jump up in a panic running around and screaming, calling the cops and shit. She was like one of them old school blenders, man, only had two speeds. Two hours later, we find out the baby's still in daycare, waiting to be picked up. They call that all day care. She'd be like, oh, that's right. Like she figured out a word in the crossword puzzle. I was like, didn't the daycare call you? You know, I had to keep the questions as basic as she was. She'd be like, I don't know. Let me check my phone. I'm doing everything in my power not to shake my head at this fool. She'd check her phone and be like, damn, they did call like 20 times. She was easy to surprise. Probably why I never threw a birthday party for her. We go pick up the baby and the baby be crying cause he don't wanna leave the Mexican lady at the daycare. It's no coincidence his first word was arroz y condules, but that was just a taste of it. We get back home and smoke be coming out the house like it was on fire. Look like a genie coming out the bathroom window. Nope, she just forgot to turn the oven off before we left, which was shocking cause she never really cooked. So they fumigate the apartment, fire trucks parked all on the grass and shit. We finally put the kids to bed. I'd be trying to talk to her like you talk to an old dog at the pound. I'd be like, hey, you all right? Cause that shit with the baby was kind of bizarre. And I grew up in Hollywood, Florida, you heard me? She get all defensive talking about, I know. And then she'd just flip. Hey, did you see that TikTok video I sent you with the little white girl who be like rolling her shoulders? She's so cute. Just like that, she just changed the conversation. I let her drive my Volvo to go pick up some food stamps and she totaled the fucking car. Drove all up on the curb through some nigga yard and crashed into a mango tree. Thank God my premiums didn't go up that much cause I ain't have auto insurance at the time. Only in Hollywood, Florida. Our TMZ stand for too many zeros. Good thing the kids ain't get hurt. She talking about she feeling a tightness in her neck and need a massage. Thinking I was gonna walk on her back like some little tiny Asian lady. I was like, I'm feeling a tightness in my pocket and needing a new car. Only tiny Asian thing I was interested in was a new Camry. This whole relationship made my lonely days feel like paradise. Misery sure do love company. I come home and the door be open. House ransacked. I be like, damn, we got robbed. I'm going through the house looking to see what they stole and I find her ass laying in the bed. Not a single mark on her. I mean, you know, aside from the stretch marks. I be like, you all right? She be like, yeah, why? I lose weight? I'm like, you ain't see we got robbed? All this time I'm thinking you was only blind to your parental responsibilities. I be like, look at the house. At least what's left in it. She be like, what about it? She was always so reassuring that way. I be like, look like a train ran through this bitch. And not the fancy kind, I'm talking Amtrak coach. She be like, oh no, I'm organizing. Just taking me a little longer than I thought. All of a sudden, I'm dating Marie Kondo. But her version of organizing was stuffing shit into the drawers and cupboards. One wrong step and we'd be living on one of them junk islands floating in the ocean. Then when she needed to get something, she'd pull it all out the cupboards and out the drawers and spread it all over the house again. Kind of like the way a Rottweiler mark his territory. Her concept of time was horrible. She'd make a list of shit that she wanted to do in a day. And in reality, Tim Ferriss couldn't complete that list in two weeks. But there'd be these moments where we'd plan to go visit her old hood or something. And she'd want to look amazing. So she'd go on a celery juice diet or some shit. I remember one time she made an enema bag out of a juice box. She had diarrhea for about a week. 
and she literally turned into another person for a couple of weeks after that. I'd be like, oh shit, things are finally turning around. I finally feel like I'm with a competent partner. It'll finally feel like we was winning in this bitch, like Vanessa Williams playing doubles with her sister. But we get back from visiting our old hood, and within days, she'd be back to her old habits. Oreo stains caught up in the perspiration in between her titties. It's like Jekyll and Hyde. Or like when Kanye go off his meds. I'd be like, where the fuck that other gal go? And can I get her number? Here go the crazy shit. The kids was equally absent-minded. Like baby ducklings following their mama in the Fort Lauderdale traffic. These motherfuckers would forget they had school for weeks at a time. And if you tried to talk to them about it, they do the same thing they mama did. If you think education is expensive, try ignorance. They get all defensive, get an attitude, or get all emotional as if I was committing child abuse by asking them if they should be in school. Apparently, the only school they wasn't failing was drama. I was like, what the fuck I get myself into? Like that white girl who fell down the well? I'm stuck in a house full of lazy, unproductive motherfuckers. This shit ain't even fun. I'm starting to miss prison. Now, this ain't to say that I'm perfect by a long shot, but compared to these motherfuckers, I was the black Bill Gates. But this was one third world country I wasn't trying to rescue. Amber would always say, I mean, Nisi. Her name is Nisi, but I like to call her Amber because the kids is always missing. Nisi would say that she was going to shower and head to bed so that she could get up early in the morning and be productive. I'd be like, did you say productive or abducted? Because at that point, abducted sounded more realistic. Four hours go by, Nisi's still on the phone scrolling through YouTube. It's damn near two o'clock in the morning. Kids supposed to be up for school at seven. Well, I'm like, what? You think your kid's going to be the early worm because they always in the dirt? Then she snapped too. Oh, as in oblivious. I was supposed to take a shower. She had absolutely no regard for anybody's time. I'm telling y'all, man, it's like I was raising her and her children. All they did was step on my dreams. I wonder if that's where they got the term stepfather. I couldn't do it no more. Like Lil Nas X, I was out. The shit was adding no value to my life whatsoever. And the burden of knowing I was exhausting all my resources and hard-earned money for a family of people who would never really understand the sacrifices I was making made me sick to my fucking stomach. I started putting Pepto-Bismol in my protein shake. I'm with a partner I can't talk to cause she got teenage sensitivity. She's so damn moody you think she was on anabolic steroids. Her anxiety was through the roof. Every conversation, every disagreement was blown way out of proportion. And her level of productivity was lower than a seven year old's. Probably why there wasn't no art on the fridge. And then one day her period was late. And up to that point, her period used to be the only thing that was on time. I got scared cause I knew this was not the role model I wanted for my child. It wasn't even the floor model. It felt trapped cause I ain't wanna abandon her kids. And now I definitely ain't wanna abandon my unborn child and leave them with her irresponsible ass. But I ain't wanna be stuck with they burdens either. It was a real Sophie's choice. I realized Nisi's ex-boyfriend, I mean ex-girlfriend, I mean, look, I don't know all the pronouns, but I realized he, him, her, she used to do a really good job of looking after the kids while Nisi asked me out somewhere still in groceries. That's one thing I really liked about prison. You ain't had to worry about getting nobody pregnant. I started thinking, I'm like, what if this gal about to give birth to my seed? Now I'm gonna be stuck with her ass and four kids with little to no help. They call them single parents because ain't a single good thing about it. I can barely survive as it is. I had no one to turn to with because all my family, all my homies had done told me not to get with her trifling ass. I was gonna have to eat crow and at the time I was trying to be a pescatarian. But this is the shit you do when your self-esteem lower than penny stock. You settle because deep down inside you don't feel worthy of better. But they don't give out souvenirs at a pity party. Could I have done better at choosing a partner and caused myself a lot less strife? Probably, but I didn't deserve better. This was my karma. Their level of dysfunction is what made my level of dysfunction tolerable. Like two junkies nodding out together. By the way, if you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell right now, you gonna earn you some good karma. Cause this channel is leading a psychological revolution. But I didn't feel qualified to complain about my situation because no matter where I ran to, I'd find equally dysfunctional partners. I'd proven that to myself over and over again. My relationship GPS was stuck on one destination. Zero, 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 dysfunctional road. Sometimes my mother would text me in the middle of the night, worried out her mind, telling me she had dreams of my hands and feet being tied and not in the fun Cinemax way. And I'd say that's because they are, mama. I'm stuck, not just in my relationship, but stuck with myself. This was one hole I wasn't digging out. Then one day, out of nowhere, I get a phone call. It always happens that way, don't it? It was a teacher from Demetrius' school. Demetrius. 
that's Nisi's oldest son. The teacher said she had reason to believe Demetrius was struggling as a student due to ADHD. I think that's the high definition version of ADD. I said, no, no, I believe he's struggling because he don't have the best role models at home. It's pretty dysfunctional around these parts. Help me if you can. I was more desperate than a white single mom trying to trap a black baby daddy on the Maury show. The teacher said that may be part of the problem, but your son exhibits a lot of symptoms of ADHD. I got on WebMD, started fact checking, couldn't find shit. I said, what's that? She said attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. I was like, oh, I thought that was something they just get to spoil white kids. So I was like, really? Well, what's the symptoms then? She read off a list. She said he has a lot of difficulty transitioning. I was like, okay, now that could mean a lot of things in 2021. Can you please clarify? Sometimes if you play dumb, they won't know that you uninformed. She said moving on to the next task, chore or assignment. But his resistance to these types of transitions are extreme, partly because he's anticipating the degree of concentration required for the next task. For a child with ADHD, heightened concentration can be daunting. This was starting to sound familiar. I said, what else? She said, well, he's easily distracted and has poor listening skills due to his inability to focus. Always tardy, restlessness, strong emotional reactions to minor things, struggling with prioritization. I said, birds of a motherfucking feather. I said, Mrs. Teacher at the school, you just described Darius' mother to a T. Only thing you left out was multiple baby daddies. She said ADHD often results in marital challenges as well. She said, has your family ever been diagnosed by a licensed medical professional? I said, diagnosis for what? We apparently the poster children of this shit. She said, please don't worry. I'm not suggesting your child needs medication. I'm just making sure that Demetrius' parents are aware that some of his shortcomings may be a direct result of a disorder. I thought Captain Obvious was only in them stupid fucking commercials. I said, oh, it ain't my child. It's my stepson. I don't really know him like that. She said, oh, I tried to call his mother, but she doesn't answer her phone. I was like, okay, well, at least she's consistent at that. I couldn't wait to tell Nisi she might have ADHD. I also knew that she was gonna wanna argue that shit, so I put together a plan to get the white lady at my son's school to tell her ass. Hey man, you wanna succeed, you gotta delegate. You know how it is, some black folks don't believe shit a Negro got to say till a white person say it. How the fuck you think Bill Clinton get elected? So I scheduled a meeting with the teacher and we went in together looking like a happy couple. By the time the teacher explained their thing, Nisi was in tears. Actually, she was more emotional than usual because at this point, you got to keep in mind, her period was late and her hormones was all over the place. Kind of like the junk in our house. The teacher suggested we see a licensed mental health professional to get diagnosed. We set up appointments for the entire family. Guess what? The entire family, with the exception of me and her youngest son, tested positive for ADHD. I was like, hey, how we get treated? Because I want to sign up for the family pass. That revelation was a game changer. Nisi started researching all the ways to naturally treat ADHD because she didn't want her kids taking Adderall. She felt it was only fair to let them get to adulthood before they got addicted to drugs. Within three, four days, I could see a significant difference. Nisi was less moody, and I was suddenly less worried about her period being late. Maybe it was just on CP time. The kids were a lot more tamed and focused. Nisi even started a YouTube channel about having ADHD. In fact, go subscribe to her channel. Nah, fuck that. She my competition. She ain't about to mooch off my following. But real talk, it was like I was with a completely different woman all of a sudden. She was now logical, dependable, focused, and on top of her shit, like a big booty fly. The house was organized. She started saving our money and got us into off-market rental properties. She was working harder than a deep fry at a Cracker Barrel. We was actually talking shit out like families on network TV. Only thing missing was the applause break in the commercial. But here's the kicker. Nisi was adamant about not giving her family prescription pills. She said taking the easy way out will always lead you back in. Rather than take medication, Nisi cut out all processed foods. She don't eat rice, soy, pasta, or anything packaged. She only eats whole foods. Our pantry went from looking like a convenience store to a farmer's market. She don't even eat sugar. If she won't sweeten her, she'll blend up a couple dates. She went from shitting once a week to not shitting once a week. And that's on her fasting days. By doing that alone, Nisi is a completely different person. Way more responsible, proactive, way happier and less moody. She seems more emotionally stable overall. I thought 180s was only possible in gymnastics. Me and Nisi are much better parents today because of what we learned about ADHD. And get this shit, Demetrius is now in college with a 3.4 GPA. I mean, it's community college, but still. 
Once he turned 18, he decided he wanted to be on medication. He was afraid he'd fuck up his education, plus it's hard to be on a strict diet and have a social life when you in college. Fuck around and get your ass beat bringing quinoa to a pizza party. The two youngest kids done started an online business. They busier than me. I came outside yesterday morning, they was washing the fucking car. It was so early, it was still dark outside, and I ain't recognize him, so I let off a few shots. Nobody got hurt, but I was just used to them waking up at like one o'clock in the afternoon. Now they levels of productivity so high, I sometimes mistake them for the Asian kids that live up the block. If you take any advice from a well-endowed life coach, take this advice. People wanna be better and do better. No doubt that they upbringings and degrees of dysfunction play a role in whether or not they can break counterproductive patterns. The sad thing is, we clutch the misery we know like a soft warm blanket but a lot of times when you think you might be dating or even married to a crazy motherfucker it could be that they are unknowingly struggling with a mental health disorder they just haven't been diagnosed and no watching dr field don't count as a diagnosis i'm talking about depression anxiety ptsd oppositional defiant disorder the bipolar disorder borderline personality disorder and the list goes on Oh, and by the way, Nisi's pregnancy test came back positive. I was excited as fuck. Nine months of us planning for that baby, but it wasn't mine. She was pregnant for a transgender ex. She ain't tell me till the baby was born. It's progress over perfection. So we ain't together no more, but we split up the rental properties and went our separate ways. But that's why I feel like it was still one of the best relationships of my life. It showed me what to look for. Moving forward, I don't fuck with a woman who can't show me her recent mental health diagnosis by a licensed medical health professional. I need to see her most recent credit score and a recent STD panel. Please visit my YouTube channel and be sure to subscribe.